The PM dismisses claims that talks with the EU president ended in disaster. The reports in a German paper say the pair clashed during dinner at Downing Street. Claims Theresa May has denied. I have to say that from what I've seen of this account, I think it's Brussels gossip. Also tonight, MPs criticise social media companies for failing to tackle hatred online, passing the costs onto the taxpayer. And police step up the search for two balaclava-wearing robbers after a man is shot dead at his million-pound Dorset home. This is ITV News with Kylie Pentelo. Good evening. The Prime Minister has dismissed as Brussels gossip claims that a recent Downing Street dinner with the EU President Jean-Claude Juncker ended in disaster. It follows claims in a German newspaper that he left the meeting last Wednesday feeling ten times worse about the prospects for Brexit talks than when he arrived. Here's our political correspondent, Emily Morgan. It looked cordial, at least that was before their meeting on Wednesday evening. Theresa May greeted Jean-Claude Juncker in Downing Street for talks before the real talks get going. But how did they go? A German newspaper claims to have the full story and it's not pretty. It reports the European Commission president left that night ten times more sceptical than he was before. He's also said to have accused the Prime Minister of having unrealistic expectations. Campaigning in the northwest today, the Prime Minister denied the discussions were in any way difficult. I have to say that from what I've seen of this account, I think it's Brussels gossip. And just look at what the European Commission themselves said immediately after the, uh, the dinner took place, which was that the talks had been constructive. Uh, but it also shows that actually these negotiations are at times going to be tough. So Downing Street's version of events couldn't be more different. They say they simply don't recognise the account given by the paper and insist that talks were constructive. But if, as reported, Mr Juncker does refuse to keep negotiations confidential, they could continue to give ammunition to the opposition. Hi, morning. Reports that Mr Juncker now fears the negotiations will end in failure is, according to some, the worst possible outcome. We have a very important trading relationship with Europe. You start from that basis and show respect, you're more likely to get a good deal. Whereas if you start with a megaphone and calling people silly names, it's not a great start to anything. She feels that somehow the lack of any kind of deal, no free trade deal, no cooperation on police and security, that that's somehow acceptable to families up and down this country. Whether they're true or not, such disclosures threaten to sour the mood between London and Brussels, and that's even before negotiations have begun. Emily Morgan, ITV News. Social media websites have been slammed for what MPs describe as a shameful failure to tackle online hate. The Home Affairs Select Committee criticised the firms for relying on users to report content and effectively outsourcing the costs of keeping their platforms clean of extremism to the police. Martha Fairley reports. MPs say it's time for social media networks to clean up their act. They say platforms like Facebook, Twitter and YouTube have repeatedly failed to remove material relating to terrorist recruitment, promoting sexual abuse of children or inciting hate crimes. We rely on our community of hundreds of millions of users to flag content that they believe is inappropriate. And the Home Affairs Select Committee says it's unacceptable they rely on their users to flag up illegal or dangerous content. I think they've got a responsibility to find some of this material themselves and not just expect the taxpayer to fund the police to try and find it instead. These are some of the richest and biggest companies on the planet. I think they've got a responsibility to act. Fires Mugal, the founder of the anti-hate speech monitoring service Tell Mama, has had personal experience of just how difficult it is to take down abusive content. This is criminal material. It clearly crosses a threshold. Police have investigated and are investigating this material. Google should remove it. And they very, very clearly have said, sorry, you have a little bit of a public profile because of your community work. The racist material we're not going to remove. Now, that's unacceptable. Today's report calls for consultations on social media companies paying towards the cost of policing sites and meaningful fines for those that fail to remove illegal content. 
They also want quarterly performance reports from social media companies on their safeguarding efforts. In March, executives from Twitter, Facebook and Google, which owns YouTube, gave evidence to the cross-party committee. They say they're constantly trying to improve the way they manage the vast amount of content generated every day. But one former European policy manager for Facebook told me it's a complex process. A lot of it is open to interpretation, a lot of it is, is highly uh, subjective and it can't, you can't simply say there's this block of illegal content that is just sitting there. It's, just, it's, it's not a reflection of the complexity. But MPs say social media giants must work harder to protect public safety, not just their profits. Martha Fairley, ITV News. President Trump says he would meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to discuss the country's continued development of its nuclear weapons program. North Korea has been the most pressing foreign policy issue facing Trump during his first 100 days in office. The president says it would be an honour to meet him if the circumstances were right. And clashes between police and protesters marred today's May Day Labour March in Paris. Three officers were hurt when mass demonstrators threw petrol bombs at police who responded with tear gas. Police say they're searching for at least two suspects after a businessman was shot dead during a burglary at his home in Dorset. 61-year-old Guy Hedger was killed in the early hours of Sunday morning. Detectives say his husband witnessed the shooting. Nick Wallace has the latest. A secluded residential property on the edge of the new forest, now a crime scene. At around three o'clock on Sunday morning, two intruders wearing balaclavas broke into Guy Hedger's six-bedroom home. They stole watches, jewellery, and police believe after being disturbed, they shot the 61-year-old marketing executive dead. Police officers from Dorset and the surrounding counties say they're doing everything they can to catch those responsible. We've launched a, an extensive inquiry by our major crime team. Every aspect of the inquiry is being pushed forward at the moment, which includes house to house, forensic search at the scene, CCTV recovery, but equally so, it's appealing to the public and witnesses to help us solve this crime. Mr Hedger's husband was in the house at the time of the attack and witnessed his partner's murder. Obviously they're, they're deeply affected by the events but are receiving support from the family and fam our family liaison officers. Guy Hedger was a successful businessman, a director of the insurance company LV and the Dorset-based Avonborn Educational Trust, which said Guy had a deep passion for education and was dedicated to expanding the experience and knowledge of children in Bournemouth. Everyone will miss his guiding hand, friendship and the wonderful service he provided us. Roads have been closed while forensic officers make inquiries and continue to comb the area for clues. Finding the burglars turned killers remains the urgent priority. Nick Wallace, ITV News. There have been three more arrests in connection with last week's anti-terror operation in London, which police say foiled an active plot. Well, Sejal Karia is more. Sejal, what more do we know about these arrests? Well, they were all young women. Two were aged 18. One was aged 19. They were all arrested this morning in East London as part of what the police are calling an active terror plot. Um, Scotland Yard say the arrests were part of last Thursday's police raid in North London in which a 21-year-old woman was shot by armed police. Now, she was arrested yesterday, immediately after being released from hospital. Altogether, there have now been 10 arrests. The scale and the nature of the police operation seems to suggest that the, uh, the plot was serious and possibly imminent. But... With this plot, the incident in Whitehall last week in which a terror suspect was arrested and with the Westminster, Westminster attack just over a month ago, there appears to be a recent surge in terrorist activity. But the UK's threat level hasn't been increased. It remains at severe. And Scotland Yard are very keen to stress that all threats have now been contained. OK, Sergio, thank you. Sporter Mark Selby needs five more frames tonight to defend his World Snooker Championship title. The 33-year-old leads John Higgins by 13 frames to 11 at the Crucible.
And to mark the occasion of her second birthday, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have released a new picture of Princess Charlotte. The picture was taken by her mother in the gardens of the, their Norfolk home, where Charlotte turns two on Tuesday. And that's it for now. I'll be back at 10. Until then, whatever you're do, doing, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.